Bang! Neves Knives, I'm Jared, and here we have a Japanese-inspired knife design from Katsu, which Katsu does all their designs are Japanese-inspired or Japanese-designed because the designer, I believe, is um, from Japan. Anyways, so they have their folding pocket knife now with a massive amount of upgrades. You've probably seen this on the channel a bit if you've, you know, if you've been watching for a while. Uh, this one does have 154 cm beautiful carbon fiber, steel liner lock with no pocket clip. It does come with a, um, with a belt sheath. Um, that was my biggest complaint about this one. But these knives are very much Japanese inspired. Like you can see it. Like if you look at my Rockstead right here, which is a thousand dollar knife, and I have a, another one that's even more money, you can see, you know, the design uh, similarities. We'll talk more about that here in one second. So it's really cool seeing them take a design that's already awesome that they sell for like 86 bucks. You can get this one for, and then the G10 one you can get for even less money. Now in a premium package with a titanium frame lock, milled titanium pocket clip and backspacer, and ZDP 189 jacketed sand mai. So around the sides of this is a probably a corrosion resistant steel of some sorts. And then the core of it, you can see it popping out right there by the edge. The core of it is ZDP 189 heat treated to, uh, well, up to 67 HRC. So it's probably between 65 and 66.8 HRC. Now, that's the same thing with my Rockstead ZDP 189. He treated up to 67 HRC. So same thing here, guys, but for <laughs> quite a bit less. You know, this one's going for about 200 bucks for... It's, we'll talk more about ZDP here in one second, but you're getting this for about 200 bucks considering all the premium materials and, and upgrades, and this one's about 86 bucks. We'll bring this back up here in a second. So we have a convex drop point blade, just like the rock said, same thing, convex grind. And it has a titanium frame lock with very neutral ergo. So this is gonna be super comfortable in any grip any position and anybody's hand. So uh, it really doesn't matter what size hand you have or anything. This is going to be comfortable because it's just so neutral and it's such a, I'm not going to say common, but it's a good thickness for just about anybody's grip. The jimping is not too sharp. So, you know, it does, it's placed well and, and it does still keep you nice and comfortable. Um, you, since there's no flipper tab or regular flipper tab, you can get up nice and tight to the edge. You're going to be able to use this knife pretty well. Um, now, the access to the lock bar, phenomenal. Love to see that. Same thing with Rockstead. Rockstead does the same thing. Really, really good access. I absolutely love that. And this thing is a guillotine. It is so drop shutty. Like, this thing just slams down. It is definitely a guillotine. So, you have the front flipping action that you can use with the thumb. You can do the side of your finger very easily, very fidgety. You can do the side of your thumb, you can do the front of your thumb. You can basically do it however you want. You can also do the reach over the top. All of them are very easy to do. It's very, very fidgety. So as far as it closed, man, it has a nice, sleek, slim, somewhat slim, profile while not being too slim. So this is going to go right in the pocket really nicely and it's going to carry rather well. There is no milling on the inside of there. So it is solid titanium scales, which I am actually happy about. Now, as far as differences between the affordable one and the premium one, one, we already talked about the pocket clip. Number two is the jimping. And I'm at, this is the one negative I have on this one. So the one negative is the jimping is smooth. This jimping was sharper. I wish they would have put this jimping on this one. I think it's just the steel maybe and the way it was machined. I'm not sure, but it, it's not very catchy. Now I will say because it pops up so high, it's not that big of a deal, uh, but I still would prefer it though. You know, I do like the jimping on this one quite a bit more, even though this one's not the sharpest either, but it's a lot more catchy. I do wish they would have took both of them though and put the jimping all the way up and around, especially if it was sharper jimping on the titanium one. 
But either way, like I said, they still work just fine because, you know, the way the design of the front flipper is, you know. Anyways, other than that, obviously, this one's a steel liner lock. This one's a titanium frame lock. So lots and lots of upgrades. Now, as far as it being like the the Rockstead, which is a Japanese-made knife, they are very, very similar. I have another Rockstead, like I said, that's even more expensive than this one. So, you know, you can see a lot of the similarities between them, but the difference is, is you're talking about 800 plus dollars difference, you know? So, very, very different prices, but these are, especially this one being ZDP 189, now this thing has a super steel, so the edge, oh yeah, let's talk about that, the ZDP 189. So, ZDP 189 is basically, if it's, if it's not, if it's heat treated on the softer side, then it's just a regular mid-grade steel, but it has the ability to be heat treated up to 67 HRC, which makes the edge retention insane, off the charts, like incredible. So you have the ability to have a super steel that holds an edge, I'm not gonna say forever, but for a very long time. However, it's reasonably easy to sharpen. Yes, when you sharpen it, it's a little glassy on the stone because it is so hard. I mean, it's such an incredibly hard steel. That's why it holds an edge for so long. But as long as you're using diamonds, it's actually fairly easy to sharpen. So, um, you know, the sharpening experience is not going to be as crazy hard as maybe some other steels that have high amounts of carbide because this one does not. But it's still very hard, so expect it, you know, to still be glassy on the diamonds. But if you, as long as you're using diamonds, it's going to sharpen up really good. Anyways, it is a good steel, but it's not the most corrosion resistant. That's probably why they put a jacket over the top of it. I don't know what the jacket is, but it's some sort of high stainless so that, you know, you don't have to worry about corrosion as much. But anyways, I think it's pretty awesome. I think it's pretty cool. I love to see, you know, knives that are already really cool get upgrades and get, you know, massive improvements, um, especially with the materials and everything. But uh, yeah, like I said, this is an affordable way for you to get a Japanese style knife. They're not made in Japan, but they are definitely Japanese designed and designed by um, a Japanese gentleman. So there you guys go. Until next time, peace.